All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and some breaking news just went down. Defensive Lions coach just got fired by Ron Rivera. And, of course, it always sucks when anybody is fired from anything, but... As far as our team goes and the future outlook, we definitely just got better. It's definitely a celebration for us fans. Again, I'm going to keep emphasizing throughout the video that it always sucks when people get fired, but this was clearly a necessary move and should have been done a long time ago. We're going to dive into exactly how bad our defensive line has been underperforming the past couple of years. I mean, I have advanced statistics and everything. We're going to break down all of the turmoil that Sam Mills had between him and his defensive linemen and just the overall team the other coaching staff as well and just basically all of the negatives that he was bringing with them even outside of just direct play on the field of course we also got to break down why he was fired especially from ron rivera's words also warren sapp was at training camp today last time we saw him coaching up the defensive line it was in mandatory mini camps and he's back and also Ryan Kerrigan has been helping coach the D-line. But Jeff Zagonina was the one that was promoted. So of course we got to break down who he is, where he came from, and is he the man for the job? So everything that just went down today, past, present, and future, as far as this defensive line goes, again, advanced stats and everything, we about to get into it. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video, just like this one i have a lot of videos coming out today it's about to be a very busy day and remember i'm live streaming at 6 p.m today to make up for missing sunday with the family event that i had going on make sure you pull up every friday for the broadcast show where we talk about everything sports music anime everything going on in pop culture and also make sure you pull up for every sunday from now on for the call-in show where y'all can call in ask whatever question you may have or voice your opinion about a lot of things most notably sam mills getting fired and things like that and everything that's going down in training camp but without further ado let's get it Okay, Ron Rivera. Wow. Wow. Didn't know you had it in you. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I been gave up on Sam Mills potentially getting fired ever for this team. And the timing is a little weird because the firing isn't weird. Like I said, Sam Mills should have been fired. But to fire a positional coach, like the positional coach, not even like an assistant or anything or somebody lower, to fire them in the middle of training camp is a little weird. But again, it should have been happening. But still, like Rivera, wow. Didn't know you had it in you. I mean, finally showing that he's not loyal to a fault. Finally? Still a couple of other guys that he may want to review that's still currently in the coaching staff and on the roster. But man, he finally let go of somebody that he has a long history with. I'm very surprised. I'm surprised it didn't just happen before training camp happened. I don't know, like, I want to know what exactly what happened for it to just have to happen today. Because we're going to dive into why he was fired, of course, and Rivera even speaks on it and everything like that. But why today? Hey, did something change today that they have an argument Ron Rivera probably approached them and was like man we got to change some things and maybe Sam Mills was being stubborn and Ron Rivera was like all right man I rock with you long history but we we got to stop this here we got to stop this right now because again weird timing so until we get like some real insider information on what happened I want to know why today that's going to be my biggest question I can answer a lot of questions you may have throughout this video but why today is not one of them and here's Rivera announcing the fact that Sam Mills was relieved of his duties. I relieved uh, Sam Mills of his of his duties, and um, just uh, a difference in, in philosophy for the most part. And um, we'll go from there. And man, this came out of nowhere. And so basically, Rivera went on to say that it was basically just a difference of opinion. He said it's a difference in philosophy. He said it was less about the defensive line's underperformance last season and more about this training camp, which is really interesting. Something definitely happened recently. There was definitely some type of heated debate, argument, or something. I can definitely believe it was over philosophy, though, because that's been the main reason we don't like Sam Mills. Granted, I would prefer his personality to be a little bit more lively, and we're going to dive into that towards the end of the video and how that probably affected things but even just philosophy wise remember when warren sat pulled up 
during mandatory mini camps, he was trying to teach the D-line, you need to penetrate. Stop just playing around at the D-line. Go make plays. Don't be like how Nick Saban has his Alabama linebackers where they're basically just there to clog things up and allow other guys to make plays like linebackers, DBs, or whoever. No, you go be the one to make the play. And that's what Warren Sapp was trying to teach the guys while he was here in mandatory mini camp. But I remember when he first said that in the interview that that's what he was trying to tell the guys to do. That was an exact contradiction, the exact antithesis to what Sam Mills has been trying to teach these guys to do and apparently with Sam Mills getting fired I guess Rivera agreed with Warren Sapp's philosophy and not with Sam Mills philosophy and then so since that's what Sam Mills has been uh, telling the defensive line to do this whole time has Rivera just disagreed with it but allowed it and how does Jack DeRio feel about this does he disagree I mean apparently since he's still here maybe he's on the same side as Rivera and Warren Sapp and again why did it take this long if your head coach your defensive coordinator and experts that you can trust on the defensive line guys that have done it before Warren Sapp all disagree with what Sam Mills had going on why did it take this long and then also to go back to the fact that the defensive line's underperformance last season wasn't the majority of it it was more so what happened in training camp and I would definitely disagree I can mean I, maybe you can say it's 50-50 but I definitely feel like the defensive line's underperformance last season had to have had somewhat of a big part there's no way that was a minor issue. We can't just ignore that. And again, we're going to get to the advanced statistics later as to how much we drastically underperformed. Because I don't think people truly understand how bad it was with all of the talent that we had. And then here's Rivera basically talking about how difficult it was to let go of Coach Sam Mills. Very difficult. Very difficult. I've known Sam a long time and he's a very good football coach. And, and I really appreciate everything he's done. You know, he, he helped us win a division our first year. And, you know, and just things got tough last year. But... There's some things that, you know, I felt I, I wanted to change. And again, Ron Rivera is loyal to a T. So I'm pretty sure it was difficult for him and definitely loyal to a fault at times. But I'm just glad that he finally was like, man, winning over loyalty, at least in this case, man. We just got to do what we can to be the best team possible. And at the end of the day, we have a long history together, but you got to go. And here's Rivera talking about Ryan Kerrigan continuing to shadow the coaching staff. Uh, will, will Ryan Kerrigan continue to assist in the near term as well? Well, he'll continue to shadow like he's been doing. You know, Ryan came out here to kind of see what this was like. You know, he's truly interested in, in coaching, but for the most part, you know, he'll continue to do the shadowing that he's been doing. Really interesting, man. I mean, Ryan Kerrigan, we'll see. I mean, I doubt he's just going to suddenly become our defensive lines coach already, but I love the fact that he's involved. Again, at the FedEx field practice, Ryan Kerrigan was like the one being the offensive lineman for a defensive lineman to practice against while warming up. Like there was a picture of Ryan Kerrigan with his hands on Montez Sweat's chest and telling him what to do and things like that. So I love the fact that he's heavily involved. Involved. And also, I mean, speaking of the defensive line, Jonathan Allen was asked how he felt about the Sam Mills firing, and he gave a nice detailed response. Very surprising, but at the end of the day, it's not my job to worry about that. It's my job to play football, and that's what I'm going to do. We have the utmost faith in Coach, faith in Coach Rivera, and, you know, we're going to rally, and we're going to go. What, what, what did you find out? out? I'm sorry? How did you find out? Coach Rivera came and talked to the D-line personally. Well, what was his message to you guys? He just told us that it was his decision for whatever reason or another, and he told us he's going to be moving forward as a helm. And that was it. We got a job to do. Did you have any sense that this is something like this going to happen? I had no idea. No. What is Jeff at as a, as a coach? When you look at a guy who's played 17 years at, in the position in the NFL, there's so much that he's learned over those 17 years and however many years he's been coaching. So, I mean, there's so much that he could teach us, and, you know, we're just excited to get to work. What are the things that you learned from him already? I mean, like, it's kind of like what I learned from Warsaw is the mentality you have to play with. When you look at a guy who played 17 years in the NFL, they're not normal. And you can't be normal to do what we do. And like I mentioned earlier, Warren Sapp was at practice today as well. So I guess they already went into today knowing that they would fire him. So maybe they needed some extra help. And again, don't even ask. They asked Warren Sapp back in mandatory mini camps if he'd be willing to become our defensive lines coach or at least help around like permanently. And he said that he loves Florida too much. And I mean, I understand the weather. I can see it, and that's his home. Born and raised Florida, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, great. That's literally been like his entire life. So I can understand that. I mean, I wish we could somehow convince him to become a part of this organization permanently with like a real role and an official title to some capacity. Again, even if he's not the official defensive lines coach, at least make him an assistant or something. Because I can't remember his exact quotes from Mandatory Minicamp, but he said a lot of great things. He said, we got to work as like a pack and a lone wolf starves. 
everybody has to do their part and compliment each other it's not a solo act at all he was talking about how like i mentioned earlier guys need to penetrate and make plays they need to be more aggressive and not just be the guy that gets in the way like sam mills was basically coaching him to do i mean he just has so many quotables that was only like a piece of a lot of the great things he said so as much as we can keep him around please do if it's just all throughout training camp and that's the most he's willing to help us with please get that from him and then continue to beg him when training camp is over to potentially move into a more permanent role with this team just keep him around as much as you can and ask him every day hey warren sap some dogs i know you love them that was another quote that he had he was literally drooling over jonathan allen montez sweat deron Payne, and chase young's talent i mean he was super high on them he feels like they should easily be the best defensive line in football and things like that and so keep nudging them every time he comes to help us he'll be like you know what i know you love these guys you know you can coach these guys permanently right you know these can become your boys these can become your babies that you mature and turn into some straight demons but again i'm very surprised that this didn't happen sooner and not even just his philosophy but the issues that he had with players directly there has been a long history of friction between sam mills and several washington defensive linemen remember before the 2020 season even started matt was angry since back then about sam mills I mean, it goes all the way back to 2020 and again it wasn't just Matt Ioannidis it's multiple defensive linemen from several reports that we've heard over the past couple of years and then remember JP Finlay also wrote something about it in January he said quote don't expect big name coaching changes but that doesn't mean there won't be changes the biggest position to watch might be the defensive line Sam Mills III has coached the Washington defensive line for two seasons and sources suggest he might not have the ear of the position group it's hard to look at Washington's defense defensive line performance from last season and suggest the group maximized their talent. The Burgundy and Gold has made significant investments along their front and needs the group to play demonstrably better in 2022 and get back on track. It has a group of alpha males with Jonathan Allen, Chase Young, Deron Payne, and others. And things clearly reached a boiling point during a loss in Dallas when defensive linemen were swinging at each other. Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, that fight had something to deal with Sam Mills. Granted, nobody was swinging at Sam Mills, but again, there was a lot of frustration from the way that he was coaching them and they just happened to get in an argument about it and ended up swinging on each other about it going back to jp finlay's article he said this will be an interesting spot to watch as mills goes way back to rivera to their days in carolina another coaching spot to watch and i mean a lot of people called it a lot of people have been on this for months really over a year now for real a lot of us including me have been screaming for sam mills's firing for a while again want to keep emphasizing anybody getting fired is very sad so i don't want to treat this video like it's a big celebration but again this is positive news for us as a team and a fan base but i thought it was also really funny because bleeding burgundy and gold had two really funny but good points on twitter about this he said quote you can't be 5'8 teaching 6'5 dudes pass rush moves it just doesn't work like that and he also said maybe this is why Montez has been so disrespectful at practice this offseason Mans is on his last leg with Mills and that's true it's not to the extent of Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne fighting on the sideline last year but Montez Sweat has been very chippy so far this offseason talking a bunch of crazy trash even more than usual him and Charles Leno even kind of had a, like an argument that Rivera got upset about because he wanted the the reps to keep going the snaps they were trying to go fast pace and it got to a point where Charles Leno and Montez Sweat were like all right we got to talk this out and then Rivera had to stop him and they had to continue on with practice and then they talked later when practice started to die down and I truly believe Sam Mills has been the catalyst for a lot of this and again speaking of the d-line and this is where we start to get to our advanced statistics and how much they underperform there's no excuse this deep line should literally be the best in football four first round picks and now with the second round pick and for Darian Mathis added to the mix and a whole lot of talent in the depth chart I'm really excited about Shaka Tony they're very high on James Smith Williams William Bradley King even looked pretty good at times Casey Tuhill looked good at times in meaningful snaps last year in the regular season after injuries to Montez Sweat and Chase Young again Chase Young and Montez Sweat of course got hurt last year but even before they got hurt they were underperforming and granted those guys flashed at times but they were just never able to put it all together and 
I blame Sam Mills there. You see the talent, you see the flashes, and for some reason we just couldn't be consistent. And the main problem is that we couldn't work as a cohesive unit. I remember that Bills game, what was it, week three, where you could already see, oh, this is about to be a long season for our defensive line. Chase Young and Montez Sweat going too far back. I mean, basically just running themselves out of the play, running completely past Josh Allen to the point that it doesn't matter what they do at this point. They're so far behind them, they're not affecting them. Then Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and everybody, Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle, everybody struggling and kind of being a little selfish and it, it just looks like everybody's not on the same page some plays some of the guys are trying to listen to sam mills with the unselfish and don't penetrate philosophy and then some plays are like forget that this isn't working i'm gonna just do me every now and then and it was just a whole bunch of confusion selfishness and just overall not good defensive line coaching last year and I also think it's funny too because with him gone and you look at all of the talent on his defensive line there's probably a line of guys that would just love to get the opportunity for this job now granted we've already promoted Jeff and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later we're gonna get to him and his history where did he come from are we optimistic about this hiring but I mean there's a guy lining up to coach this defensive line I mean you can easily come in here and just let them be them and just don't get in the way like Sam Mills did. You don't even have to be the smartest guy ever. Just don't get in their way. Allow them to do what they do best. And just coach them up a little bit. And if they go out there and perform, you're going to look like a genius or a prodigy just basically doing the bare minimum. Again, there's a line of guys that want to coach this defensive line. And I'm surprised that we held on to Sam Mills the third that long when you could have easily have upgraded that coaching position. That has to be one of the most attractive jobs in the NFL outside of, of course, being a head coach, offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator as far as a positional group taking a group of guys that talented and that have underperformed man that has to literally be outside again head coach offense coordinator defensive coordinator the best job opening that everybody's fighting for i'm pretty sure even the qb's coach is like man let me at least try all of this talent i should be able to do something with it and pro football focus remember entering this season just a couple of months ago ranked their top defensive lines in the nfl and we were second and the only reason we're not first is because Aaron Donald is just that different. Now, granted, the Rams don't have just a bunch of sorry guys throughout the defensive line, but we are the better defensive line overall. They just have Aaron Donald. If Aaron Donald did not re-sign with the Rams, we would have easily have been number one. And then if you go to the advanced statistics as far as pass rush win rate, out of defensive ends and outside linebackers, we didn't have a single guy in the top 10. Out of defensive tackles, Jonathan Allen was eight. In run stop win rate, out of defensive ends and edge rushers, we didn't have a single guy in the top 10. And defensive tackle wise, we didn't have a single guy in the top 10 there as well. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And then going deeper into advanced statistics, when it comes to hurry up percentage against quarterbacks, QB hurries per drop back, we were in the middle of the league going towards the bottom when it comes to knockdowns on the quarterback per pass attempt we were in the middle of the league even though we were a little higher in that category but still very average we were in the middle of the league in sacks with 38 the pittsburgh still has led the league with 55 vikings with 51 in pressure percentage we were in the middle of the league going towards the bottom the second half of the league with only a 24.2 the buffalo bills had a 30.8 no excuses man that's ridiculous and then even when you go to dvoa with all of that talent we were 12th in adjusted line yards against the run we were bottom six in power success win rate against us bottom six in adjusted sack rate because you know dvoa does a lot of adjusted things to truly see like who was really good we were in the middle of the league there as well again pro football focus feels like we should have at the very least the second best defensive line in football why are we in the middle of the league 12th at best in all of these categories every stat that you look at to see is this defensive line really as good as it should be the fact that pro football focus feels like we have top two defensive line talent and last year we went out there and we're at best 12th and usually towards the middle of the league or even towards the bottom of the league and all of those advanced statistics that's a shame man and it's also crazy too because sam mills the third was in canton celebrating sam mills seniors hall of fame enshrinement and he just came back to a pink slip that is crazy i mean he might have literally have just gotten back today man got fired on his day off and like i spoke about earlier but I didn't really dive into it. Remember, Sam Mills III has been on Rivera's coaching staff since 2011, from 2011 through 2019 in Carolina in all three of his years here. They've been together for 11 plus years prior to today. And so that's why it was very difficult for Ron Rivera to go ahead and let him go. And again, I don't wanna keep throwing more dirt on his name, but 
If John Moscow is our best positional coach, Sam Mills was easily our worst. If you had to rank him, and Chris Harris is probably right behind John Moscow as one of our best. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that a lot of our best positional coaches are really passionate guys. I'm hoping Jeff has some of this in him because in his press conference, he was kind of chilling. But I mean, hopefully he's a yeller. I really hope he has some yelling and nastiness to him like Jim Tom Sula had. Because if you look at it, I don't think there's a coincidence that a lot of our best coaches are the loudest, angriest, and most competitive and trash talking guys in the coaching staff. John Moscow is probably the team's best cusser. Chris Harris is probably the team's best overall trash talker and motivator. I don't know if you've seen that Jahan Dotson mic'd up thing, but I love the fact that Chris Harris before practice went and talked trash to him. Like we're only giving you two passes today, that's it. And so that gets into the mind of Jahan Dotson and motivates him to take this practice even more seriously than he probably already was, cause now it's competition. I gotta shut this guy up. I love that. They're more relatable, they're funnier, they're more engaging. And remember Jim Tom Sula, was just straight up crazy. I mean, you got John Moscow cussing crazy. You got Chris Harris talking super trash. Jim Tom Sula was just straight up crazy. I don't know what was wrong with Buddy, but it worked very well. Maybe yelling has something to deal with it. Maybe passion has something to deal with it. But moving on, Rivera has officially announced that assistant defensive lines coach Jeff Zaganana will officially replace Sam Mills as the defensive lines coach. Here's Rivera speaking on it. What will Jeff add to that room as a coach? Well, you know, obviously Jeff played the game and and so he's got a tremendous amount of experience and 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 knowledge uh that he does share with the players and he'll continue to share with the players he's got tremendous enthusiasm so he'll continue to be that guy for them it's actually pretty crazy too because jeff just found out this morning that he was going to become the defensive lines coach everybody just like we did we found out a little bit later than they did of course but everybody found out today within just the past few hours but Jeff said that nothing changes. They just need to play hard and stay healthy. I definitely disagree with nothing changes. It better be something different from Sam Mills, but I see what he's saying. And just a background history lesson from him. In high school, he was a letterman in football, basketball, hockey, and track and field. And he won all East Suburban Catholic Conference honors all area honors, all county honors, and all state honors. And he played his college ball at Purdue University, which is coincidentally where Ryan Kerrigan played his college ball at as well. So him and Ryan Kerrigan definitely have that in common, but I'm pretty sure they've already had conversations and laughed about that already. And while playing for Purdue, he led the team in sacks and tackles for loss twice for two seasons. And he even led the team in total tackles one season. But he ended up getting drafted in the seventh round, pick 185 overall in the 1993 draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he was with them for a little while, then the Panthers, then the Falcons, then the Rams, and the Colts, Rams, Dolphins, and then the Texans. So he didn't have much success at the NFL level other than the fact that he is a Super Bowl champion. He did win a Super Bowl when he was with the St. Louis Rams when they beat the Titans in 2020 from the 1999 season. And then, more important to us, his history as a coach, he was with the Houston Texans as an assistant defensive lines coach in 2013. And then he went to the Giants to do the same thing in 2016. Then he went to the 49ers as the defensive lines coach for a year. And then I don't know what happened for a year because he just didn't coach in 2019 it looks like but we picked him up in 2020 as an assistant defensive lines coach and now in 2022 he's officially the defensive lines coach once again like he was for the 49ers back in 2017 and this man had 26 sacks in his career while bouncing around and not playing very long so maybe he can bring something to the table i'm really hoping so and a reporter asked him what needs to change for this defensive line to have more success here's jeff's answer playing as a unit playing hard every play, being accountable for our mistakes. Um, you now, in gelling, we're gelling, you know. We are, I, I like where we're at right now in the room. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer and closer every day. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like if you liked it. If you learned anything, please leave a like, man. I really appreciate it. And of course, like I already said, get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel. Are you celebrating? Are you sad about it? All of that. And who do you feel like you want to replace Sam Mills? I mean, of course, Jeff is officially the defensive lines coach right now. But if Warren Sapp said he wanted to become our defensive lines coach, do you think we're turning them down? And so let me know, do you prefer Warren Sapp, Ryan Kerrigan, or are you excited about Jeff? And as always, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. You name me, see scrolling on the screen right now. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.